Last week, we learned how, as a young girl, Mary Slessor became a real Christian and not just a person who goes to church. The Bible explains that everyone has sinned. Sin is anything we do, say, think, or feel that does not please God. Mary admitted she had sinned. She had learned that to become a Christian, she needed to believe Jesus was the Savior who had come to take the punishment for sin. Oh, Mary knew how bad punishment felt, and she was glad to learn that Jesus would take the punishment that she deserved. Mary also learned the importance of actually talking to God in prayer and making a commitment to God. She confessed her belief that Jesus would take her sins away and ask him to be her savior. With that simple prayer and the honesty of her heart, Mary Slessor became a real Christian. She became part of God's family and now had a home in heaven. Mary's life changed. She would think about her choices and make sure that she would honor God with everything she would say and do. She read her Bible and she looked for ways to learn more about God. She still worked long hours at the cloth mill, but her heart was so happy to know that she could talk to God anytime and anywhere. And of course, Sunday was still the best day of the week. When we left our story last week, I told you that illness would come to Mary's family again. Remember this story is started over 170 years ago and people back then did not have the good medical care and good living conditions and even some of the habits of cleanliness that we have today. The little apartments did not have real bathrooms, so people would dump the bathroom waste into an open gutter in the street. This not only led to bad smells, but there would also be a lot of germs, and that was making people sick. Cholera is a bacterial disease that is spread through contaminated water and food. The living conditions in the millwork section of Dundee, Scotland were unfortunately just right for this disease to spread through the population. Cholera took the life of two of Mary's sisters and of her brother. Before long, Mary's father died and the family was down to Mary and her mother and two younger sisters. At a very young age, Mary had seen a lot of death. You might think that that would make her discouraged, but it really made her all the more determined to live her life for Jesus. Heaven sounded so wonderful, and Mary knew she would get to go there one day, so it helped her to not be afraid of the trouble that was all around her. When the mission reports were read in the church, Mary listened carefully to every word about Africa. Her church had missions in several different countries, but Africa always seemed to be where Mary was most interested. She so wanted to see it one day. The reports told about how hard life was there due to tribal wars and wild animals and strange illnesses. Mary thought it sounded scary, but she was drawn to earnestly pray for the people there to come to faith in Jesus. With both of her brothers dead, Mary just didn't think she would ever go to the mission field because most of the missionaries she was hearing about were men. So she thought, well, I'll just serve Jesus more right at home. And she was already teaching in her church And when her church leaders were going to start a mission in the worst part of town, Mary volunteered to teach. Some of the people at church told her, Mary, you you really shouldn't do this because it's such a bad section of town. Well, there are rival gangs that fight each other and you could get hurt. But Mary wanted to go. The church leaders agreed to let her go, but they said, we'll only go as a group. We don't want anybody going down to that part of town by themselves. When she started teaching, some of the children came to hear her. Others yelled at her and threw rocks and mud. Mary kept thinking of the missionaries who risked their lives going to Africa. 
Oh, this is not as hard as what they go through, Mary thought to herself. She was determined to do a good job and prayed for God to help her lead people to faith in Jesus. As the days went by, word spread among the neighborhood that a little red-haired lady was teaching the Bible at the mission church. There were some older boys in rival gangs that were watching the proceedings at this mission church, and they were just hanging back, wondering how they could cause trouble. After the things had gone on for a while, their chance came when one day Mary went to the mission church a little earlier than the other teachers. She had prepared her lessons and she wanted to write things on the chalkboard before the children arrived. Several boys surrounded her in an alleyway. Two boys grabbed her arms and held her as one boy swung a sharp piece of metal tied on a string very close to her face. He threatened her and he told her the gangs did not want a mission church there. Mary was terrified, but she prayed and tried not to show how scared she was. The boy swung the metal piece closer and closer to her face as he told her she should give up and tell them she would go home. She said, no matter what you do to me, I will not stop serving Jesus. She was determined to stand her ground and not give in to fear. The boy swung the sharp metal piece closer and closer. Say you will leave, he demanded. Mary just stared. She stared right into his eyes. Closer and closer, the sharp metal came to her face. She did not move. Finally, the metal piece scraped across her forehead. She did not cry. She did not move. She just kept staring at the boy as blood ran down her face. Suddenly, the boy stopped, and he told the other two boys, Let her go. He said to Mary, You're the bravest girl I've ever seen. You can teach your Bible class, and we won't let any of the other gangs bother you. Mary reached up and wiped the blood from her forehead. Well, why don't you come on in and listen to me teach? You will find out who gives me strength, said Mary. To her surprise, the boys said yes and came in and sat in the back of the Bible study. Now Mary had prepared very well for her Bible class, and even though she was still shaking on the inside from the experience of being tormented by the gang members, she prayed and taught that class with great confidence. Mary began to explain everything that she had learned. She told those boys, God loves everyone, but we do things wrong, and that's called sin. And the payment for sin is death, but God has a gift for us. Jesus left heaven and came to earth to die on the cross to pay for our sins. Then three days later, he came back to life to prove that he is the Savior. The way to become a Christian is to admit that we sin and believe that Jesus is the Savior, just as the Bible says. If we pray and ask Jesus to be our Savior, he will forgive us and give us the gift of eternal life. That's a life where you can live in his beautiful heaven. Now, Mary may have been surprised as she taught the class that the boys sat quietly and respectfully in the back of the room. She had several children tell her they wanted to become Christians. And those gang boys sat politely and listened as Mary prayed with the children. Mary may have even been more surprised when the leader of the boy gang boys came up, the one who had scratched her face with a sharp metal. He came up to her and he said, I want to become a Christian. This boy knew that he had done many bad things and he surely would never get to go to heaven. But if Jesus was willing to forgive him, he would pray and he would ask for this forgiveness. That young man and several other gang members became Christians that very day. Mary knew God had answered her prayers for the people in this area of the city. She had actually taught God's word and she had helped people learn of the forgiveness God offers through Christ. 
Mary's heart was so happy, she knew she wanted to serve the Lord for the rest of her life. Let's take a minute and look at another Bible verse that helps to explain how to become a Christian. This verse is found in the book of Romans, just like the other two verses we have had so far in these lessons. This one is Romans 10, 9. It, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is a good memory verse. To confess with your mouth is what you do when you pray and ask Jesus to be your Savior. That's the letter C in the ABCs of salvation. This verse also shows us the importance of being willing to let Jesus be the boss of your life. That's what it means when you say Jesus is Lord. He is the one who directs your life. Mary's life changed when she became a Christian. The boys from the gangs who became Christians, their lives changed also. They attended church and they began to show kindness. Trouble and, cr and, gr and crime went down in that area of town. It was clear that faith in Jesus was making the worst part of the city a better place to live because Jesus was changing the lives of the people there. And Mary Slessor had a part in that transformation. For many years, Mary worked in the cloth mill 12 hours a day, six days a week. She worked hard and got promotions so she could earn more money and take care of her mother and her two younger sisters. As tired as Mary was, each night she went to teach at the mission and she made time to pray and study her Bible. On Sunday, her only day off from work, she would attend church and then go to teach in the mission church again. Mary used every bit of her time wisely and tried to put serving the Lord first in all things. Then one Sunday, sitting in church, listening to the mission report, Mary felt God calling her to go to the people of Calabar, Africa, and help them come to know Christ. Oh, she thought, could it be, could it be that I could really go and do this? Mary was willing. Her sisters were getting old enough why they could go to work and they could help take care of mother. Oh, but what would her mother say? Mary had been taking care of her own mother since she was just 11 years old. What if mother couldn't bear for Mary to go away? Mary spent many days in prayer. Then after church the next Sunday, Mary decided to tell her plan to her mother. Mother, I, I've been praying for a long time, and I believe God wants me to apply to the Foreign Mission Board to go overseas to teach the gospel of Jesus on the mission field. Mary's mother gasped for breath, and tears welled up in her eyes. <laughs> what do you think Mary's mother will say? Hmm, do you think she will say, oh, yes, Mary, go! Or do you think she will cry and say, Mary, I can't live without you? Well, find us online next week for the next episode of Mary Slesser.